Welcome to Expound. Our goal is to expand your knowledge of the truth of God as we explore the Word of God in a way that is interactive, enjoyable, and congregational. We have uh, somebody special on the phone. If you were with us at the Epicenter Conference, you heard uh, Dr. Mitch Glazer speak to us. He is the president of Chosen People's Ministry. Uh, he was a lot of fun. Mitch, are you there? I am Skip. Shalom. Good evening. Shalom. Where, where are you? Where am I calling you from? Where, where, where are you at? Uh, my wife and I are hiding out in the Pocono Mountains on a little riding retreat. Oh, very nice. So it's two hours later there. It's two hours later, and we're uh, yeah, we're in nice territory for the New York area. Uh, well, just tell us a little bit about yourself. You are you're a Messianic Jew. What does that mean? Yeah, I am a, a true blue New York, Brooklyn born and raised Messianic Jew. <laughs> so I am a Jewish believer in Jesus. I was raised in a traditional Jewish home, bar mitzvah at the age of 13. My parents are both Jewish. And uh, when I was about 19 years, of, 19 years of age, my two best Jewish friends found Jesus, Yeshua as their Messiah. They shared the gospel with me I almost killed them because I felt that they were they were traitors, but I lost the argument, praise God, and then I found the Lord, and uh, ever since then I've been serving the Lord, and I married a nice Jewish girl, Zahava, who's also a, a, a believer in Jesus, and we have two daughters, and we live a very uh, Jewish life uh, in many different ways, and so we identify with our Christian brothers and sisters because we know the same Lord, and we identify with the Jewish people and Messianic Jews because we have that same uh, sovereign birth privilege. And how would you as a Messianic believer differ from an Orthodox Jew um, or a Hasidic Jew? Well, um, the other day I was actually talking to a Hasidic Jew and uh, well, a little while ago. and. He said, what, I, he said, what kind of Jew are you? And I said, I'm a Messianic Jew. And he smiled and he said, so am I. I said, I said well, uh, we, we're both Messianic Jews, but we probably believe in a different Messiah. And so uh, I would differ from Orthodox and religious Jews that are looking forward to the coming of the Messiah, because I believe with my whole heart that the Messiah has come. His name is Jesus. He's fulfilled the prophecies. He died and rose from my sin, and he's coming again, and he's called us to be a light to the Jewish people and to the nations. Uh, Mitch, we're studying the book of Leviticus here uh, midweek, and um, as a Messianic Jew, what, what would the book of Leviticus, how would that pertain to your life? Well, that's a, as you know, it's a complex I, a question. I wish I could sit there and listen to the Bible studies. Uh, the book of Leviticus, and I would say, uh, you know, parts of the rest of the Torah are filled with, with, with laws. They're, they're, in Genesis, you, which is part of the Torah, the five books of Moses, you have a, a lot of narrative. Deuteronomy, you have a lot of narrative and sermons. You have some laws, but Leviticus and Numbers and from uh, the middle of Exodus on through, uh, you have quite a bit of legal uh, injunctions that were given to the Jewish people. According to the rabbis, there are 613 positive and negative commandments that we're to obey, to do or, or not to do, and there, is, there are sanctions if we don't do them. And so, as a believer in Jesus, I don't think that I'm under the law anymore. Uh, I think I have a relationship to the Torah and to the law, because any, everything in the five books of Moses is still authoritative in my life. And so I have to find a way to be obedient to what God has commanded without uh, feeling that I am under the law in a way that I need to please God. Or if I disobey the law, and as you'll read through Leviticus, there are very stiff repercussions on the Jewish people because of the covenant that if they did not obey the law, for example, on the Sabbath, they could be stoned to, de to death. And so we have to find a way to draw principles for holy living out of the book of Leviticus. But uh, it doesn't mean that once in a while we shouldn't do something that's uh, prescriptive. And so uh, I will, for example, when you get to Leviticus 23 during uh, Passover, I won't eat leaven 
And one of the reasons I won't eat leaven is because it reminds me that Jesus is sinless and that he wants me to live a holy life. But I will actually not eat leaven. I don't believe I'll be judged by God for not, for not eating leaven, or if I eat leaven, but I don't eat leaven as a way of sort of uh, connecting with my own people and, and with Scripture and uh, with the Lord, who probably did it also. And that way, I'm really reminded every day of Passover during that eight-day period that God wants me to live a sinless life as much as possible. Uh, real quick, Mitch, final question. Um, you mentioned holiness, and that is one of the themes of Leviticus. Uh, speak now to a whole bunch of non-Jewish people. How can we pursue holiness in this world in which we live? Well, that's a great question, and it's a beautiful question because uh, I think God is so pleased when we do that, and I'm so glad that you have the chutzpah to teach Leviticus, Skip. I take my yarmulke off to you, really. But in 1 Peter 1, 14 through 15, uh, the apostle to the Jewish people said, As obedient children, do not be conformed to the former lusts which were yours in your ignorance. But like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior. And then he quotes from Leviticus, Be holy, for I am holy. And so ho holiness, uh, holiness from, from the Hebrew word kadosh means to be set apart. And so God wants us to be set apart for his purposes. And my prayer for myself, for my family, and for you is that we'll be set apart for God's holy purposes and that when people see us, they, they see the Lord. Beautiful. Mitch, thanks for joining us. Sorry to bother you on your little retreat, but we're glad you were with us this evening. God bless you, Skip, and the Epicenter Conference was great. Let's do it again. Thank you. God bless you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.